So everyone, welcome back to Euro Truck Simulator 2. Well, we're back in Europe um, with our amazing Mercedes-Benz Actros in the gold and black paint job. We are taking some used plastics from Munich and going all the way to Genoa if the game doesn't crash. Because <laughs> that's happened quite a lot. Um, I'm going to take this little road as well. Uh, how much... Can I take that little road? I'll take the same route and what I did before. Time to, Time to hit the road indeed. Let's go. So there's a couple of reasons why I'm doing a Euro Truck video. Um, Turn right. And not on my summer car video. There's quite... Um, it's quite a nostalgia with this game for me, and I hadn't been on it for a while. So I think, you know, doing the odd episode's fine. Yeah, I haven't done one for ages. Um, so, why not pick up the game again? So effectively, um, my summer car, when I went into it today after updating my driver software for my Logitech G920 steering wheel I noticed that um, that the steering was basically really really stiff and it felt like I was steering um, like a lump of iron I don't know why that is um, because I'm playing this game now and it's fine so the only other thing I can think of is it's due to uh, the actual controls in my summer car themselves um, and whatnot because it is quite difficult to set up a steering wheel so it's a bit of an inconvenience hopefully it doesn't crash here the game um, yeah I don't know why I don't know why it's happening to be honest um, it's just it's just a bit of an annoying thing really so I'll have to figure out how to kind of like fix that issue um, so if, so I'll have to do testing and stuff but that's why there's no my summer car as a put like in, instead of this to be honest um, I was really enjoying that game Oh, I'm speeding. There you go. But yeah, that's the that's the thing with this. Also, with this with this game, since I've been on it last, which was ages ago, they've added right, and then turn random events, detours, um, and a voice navigation, right. which is what you're hearing right now. And it's got like loads of different options, and it is really really good. I must admit. So like it's a it's a good time to come back to it and they also um SES they modified parts of Germany and they rebuilt them like um Keep right and then I can't remember now France I think they did I think I can't remember I literally can't remember what they did but they've rebuilt some sev like several areas because the game is now a lot better than what it was like three like three years ago and even five years ago five years ago I don't even know how old the game is it must be it must be seven so I'm pretty sure I played it in 2013 yep a lot lots of things have changed since then and this game has got better to the point where it's it's like a, the European clone of American Truck Simulator. Just the way it is, isn't it? Like, it's just a clone. But, like, it's still a good game. I'm not complaining. Especially when they rebuild areas like Germany and whatnot. Yeah, it's really good. So the game hasn't actually crashed... 
and I'm going at the speed limit. So I think some graphical... I think it was something to do with the graphics because they were quite high. And I've got a 1050 in this thing. Like, I had to disable the grass so the grass looks terrible now. I, I turned some settings down from Ultra just because I don't want to clog my computer up with RAM. I don't know why it crashes though, because it literally meets every single requirement. If anything, it only needs a bloody dual, dual core processor. Oh, I need to adjust my chair. There we go. Right, it, it's a dual core processor is the minimum for this. And I've got like an i7, oops. So an i7 is very good for this type of thing. I don't know why it still crashes. Probably something to do with the RAM or the folders, but then I deleted all the folders. Yeah, I don't know. Always crashes, like, this game. I don't know why. Oh, we've got an incident up ahead. There we go. And slow down a little bit. I've turned the flares off at the um, emergency... Like, there's a mod where you can get to make them more visible. And then exit right. So I turned that off, and it seems to not have crashed. So all is good. Right. And it must be that mod. <laughs> ah, that's the thing with mods. It always crashes the game. To a degree. I ah, still so got Sissel's Mega Pack, though. Got little Android on the, uh, the dash there. And I've got my... Sat nav on the uh, on the windscreen, because this one doesn't come in with a built-in sat nav. So yeah, yeah, I, qu I quite like Sisal's Mega Pack. The trailer pack's really good, um, although I'm not installing trailer packs. As of yet, anyway. Um, slow down a little bit for the corner. I'll just slow down a little as well so we can stop going flat out. 44 should do it. Uh, so, um, nothing really to discuss from the channel perspective. It's been quite quiet on my end, really. I haven't really been making a lot of videos. Um, been gaming quite a bit though. Unfortunately, games I can't record um, yet. Anyway, if if like, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the PS4 streaming thing again. There's also a car on the outside. God damn it! Um, I'm going to start that again, the PS4 streaming thing, because I don't need to edit it anymore and put it on YouTube because that's how that was how the channel started god six years ago in September so it's about five years it's five full years I think and about six this it'll be six in September that's quite staggering I've been doing this for six years nearly like oh my god where's the time gone Where's the time gone? And more importantly, like what series have I done? Obviously, the, I've deleted a few things. Ah, I've done quite a lot on the channel. Um, the Battlefield. I did Star Wars Battlefront. Um, the EA remake. I did Minecraft for like a little bit. What else did I do? Uh, I've done I've done some PC stuff. Obviously, I've done PC Building Simulator, that one episode startup company, Motorsport Manager, uh, which is still going. My Summer Car again, which is still going. Euro Truck, American Truck. There's so many different things that I've done. Um, I think I think my content is outdated to a degree. 
it's all it's all these type of games. It's simulators that one, no one knows about anyway, and two, that are really really old. American Truck Sim is probably at least three years old, and that's like a really old game in terms of gaming, um, in the gaming industry at least. Yeah, it's 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 quite outdated. Um, obviously, with the problems with my summer car, that's also I think a th two three year old game. As well. That's old, still quite popular on the channel, which I uh, which I appreciate, because obviously, my summer car is a game where you can't actually like look online. Uh, well, it doesn't have an instruction manual anyway, and it's quite complicated. So videos are the best way uh, to to help uh, like learn the game. So, what that means is that a lot of people are searching for stuff they don't know, and they're getting it. They're getting it from my content. I'm just going to pull in quickly, get a get a fuel stop. So yeah, that's that's the that's why I've done my summer car for quite a while. It's because it's popular. I'm gonna change things up somehow. I'll uh, I'll figure I'll figure something out in terms of what games to do and and that. Because it's really difficult because there's not a lot of stuff I can do. I have to do a lot of testing, uh, which I which I don't do enough of. In terms of the channel, at least, um, yeah, I need to test a lot of things. Uh, there was a series I was on about bringing to the channel, and I might actually end up doing it anyway. Um, I don't know if you guys know of a game called Disco Elysium. Uh, that game is actually, from what I've heard, really, really good um, in terms of RPG elements and leveling up and all that. And that's a new type of game uh, that I haven't played a lot of, if I'm honest, because those type of games, uh, obviously it doesn't help that they're, they're indie games, so no one actually knows big big flaw of the indie development scene is that you you don't know some of these new games that come out if I'm honest and the new games are actually really really good so it's a shame people don't know them uh, just just how it is everyone knows about Call of Duty uh, Overwatch Battlefield um, like other popular games, FIFA, etc. Like they know all about them because it's of it's made by big companies who have like a ridiculous advertisement budget. Indie games don't get the spotlight, and you have to go and find them by yourself, uh, which makes it a lot harder. But Disco Elysium is a text scrolling RPG detective game. Think of L.A. Noir but without the speech, uh, well, as much speech, and think of it as a modern-day interpretation, I'd suppose, or moderner interpretation. I don't know when it's set, so... Um, but that, that, for an indie game, one, quite, quite pricey, but if you think about it, it's got some good reviews... It's one of my friends played it and literally recommended it um, and stuff like that. And I did, I did have it on my wish list. So might do that. I might, I might do it. Go play a, a different game for a change, a text scrolling game. <laughs> Pretty decent. Um, yeah, that, that, I've seen like the first 10-15 minutes or maybe even half an hour 
of the game. Oh boy. Completely different to the likes of this. Completely different to anything. It's a very linear story. You don't get games like that anymore, pretty much. So I'm tempted. I'm tempted to to do that game on the channel. I know I, I said I was going to do series and I never really uh, I never really had any time to be honest. Just other things. Oh, I have to slow right down here. Um, other things being on the priority list. So I'm just going to change stuff up. I might as well. Nothing to really lose. I did it with XCOM 2 and it didn't really work. Uh, I kind of lost a bit of interest in the game I think. Yeah, it's just like it's the same, it's the, it's the thing you need to kind of like be modern with your game choices and you need to know how long you're gonna run stuff on the channel for, and I I, I didn't really do that effectively. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna change stuff up. Twenty twenty is gonna be the year of probably many changes. I did it before, I haven't done it like anything like this in quite a long time, but I might as well just go on this one. I haven't done it in quite a long time, so Who knows, it might it might pay off. Got nothing to lose really. If anything I've got more time to do stuff. Given the, uh, the current situation of the world, yeah, everyone seems to be watching quite a lot, a lot of stuff. Not not really surprising. Pretty good though. Um, it's good for digital creators. It's good for creators who uh, try and make a living. Some of them that I watch have just gone Twitch only for like ages and only post the odd video on YouTube because YouTube is uh, well n apparently not very good for them because uh, of the copyright claims and other stuff like ad blocker like Twitch for most people for most full time con content creators is a, a really good source of income and it's really evident that it is because there's one guy that I know who sets up donations and stuff like that and he gets loads of messages uh, and stuff because the way it works is that you can you can pay ever so much or donate so much and then you get a message on screen and gets read out and stuff um, pretty good donation system for that type of community that it is very very focused around simulation so kind of like these and like retro ish games faster than light might ring a bell for some people just other little indie games as well it's a really good community for that and yeah, it must make loads like the streamer guy Makes sense if you, if you want to do it full time. YouTube's not really the best place unless you've got a following on Twitch. Yeah, you have to kind of have the, the the following there on Twitch, really. The appeal. It's very different to YouTube, as I have found previously. Live streaming is totally different to a, a video like this, for instance. Because I really want to get into live streaming again. Um, depends what games, but I think you know, like the old, the old style of how I recorded videos and what I did back then. You know, I, this is an opportunity to kind of do that now. been recently playing uh, Call of Duty Warzone 
that's a battle royale game and uh, the first time I came across a battle royale game was Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Uh, the first dedicated battle royale game anyway, not part of like a, a, like like not a sub game as part of a main game, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um But yeah, like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, it was I don't know, like, it is my first experience, it wasn't the best game. Because there was nothing to really compare it to. And then along came Fortnite after that. Again, I played Fortnite. Um, I found it better. But then I didn't really like the building part of it. Overall, I would rather play Fortnite than to play Unknown's Battlegrounds, but that's just me. And then of course everyone, Battlefield, Call of Duty, started to copy off the Battle Royale formula as such, but um, made a few tweaks. Um, Apex Legends was actually the first Battle Royale game which I enjoyed extensively because of the system and how it worked. The, there was the pinging system. Like... That was that was like a, a groundbreaking feature in Battle Royale. Because no one did it before. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds didn't. Fortnite didn't. I think Apex Legends was the first. And soon enough gets copied off. Uh, it's only a matter of time, to be honest, before that happens. Try to copy it, put it in part of their game. And then, obviously, Battlefield. I can't really say anything about Battlefield's, um, Battlefield 5's. I think it's Firestorm. I think that's what it's called. I'm not sure. Um, I can't comment on that because I haven't played it. Um, I would refuse to play it in a Battlefield game, if I'm quite honest. It doesn't really work. Uh, but Call of Duty Warzone, I have played and I can comment on, that has another feature in it. Which I think is really good because it has the ability to not only ping but to kind of like ping se like items, so specific armors, like armors and weapons and stuff and danger. So that's, that's a little bit better. But the feature of like effectively being able to do contracts and and stuff on on the map it's it is unreal because again that's something no one's ever ever done and it's it's more than just running around in open fields and trees with no cover like in player unknown's battlegrounds you get contracts you accept it you do something you get cash you buy up kill streaks and upgrades to help you. That's something that wasn't in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, which was the inception of the battle royale genre. Now, so what I'm saying is, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. If we compare this to other battle royale games, Apex Legends, Call of Duty Warzone, uh, Fortnite, etc., don't know if there's any. Actually, H1Z1 was before Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. However, I think Player Unknown's Battlegrounds set off the the trend of battle royale as as such. Yeah, that's pretty much that. H1Z1 was before that. No one really knew what it was. I didn't until Player Unknown's Battlegrounds came. I was like, oh my god, it's like a it's like an amazing battle royale game. You get to do this and this and this. And I was like, oh, I was gonna buy this game. I bought the game. Didn't like it. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. But Call of Duty Warzone, I do like a bit better. I'm not excess. I'm not like an excessive player of Battle Royale because I don't like them as a genre generally. And there's a reason why I don't because it's it's not my type of game. That's pretty much the end of it. I'm terrible at like shooters now. I'm somewhat decent, but there's a battle royale, it's just a bit annoying. It's very unforgiving.
doesn't let you respawn and stuff. So if you're if you're on so if you're part of a squad, there's, that's a different story. But that's why battle royale. I think that's why I don't like them because battle royale games are played by uh, like groups of people generally. So that's probably what I'm missing from it. Probably would enjoy it a lot more if I had a squad of like three other people in place. That that was probably a different experience. But I play them solo, so I don't think I get the same experience there. But Call of Duty Warzone, free to play. Obviously, you get an advantage if you bought Modern Warfare because everything carries over, and you've got the knowledge of the weapons, which you know whoever doesn't have Call of Duty doesn't have. Um, but don't have knowledge of the weapons. But yeah, that game, that game is, in my opinion anyway, the the best Battle Royale game to date. No doubt there'll be many more, uh, to be honest. But yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty decent. Oh, can't even overtake. We've been going quite a while. Um, I'm going to turn on the high beams because I don't care if the other if the other cars flash the lights. I can't really see, and I don't think you'll be able to see on the video that well. Uh, so I'll just put the high beams on, light up the road a little bit. Yeah, so for this game then, um, they've launched, gosh, a lot, a lot of DLCs. Map-wise, they've done, recently anyway, Beyond the Baltic Sea and Road to the Black Sea, I believe is that. Two, you know, DLCs focused in Europe. Um, Eastern Europe anyway, of course it's going to be focused in Europe, it's not going to really be focused anywhere else, it's Euro Truck Simulator, <laughs> but, <laughs> like Eastern Europe anywhere. The, um, they also did, they're doing work on another one, and it's, uh, oops, I think it's Siberia, oh I can't remember actually. I'm not going to say that. I feel like Siberia is just like a long shot. If I'm honest. But it must be. Or I don't know. So they started work on that. And that's a lot. Oh no, Iberia. That's it. Not Siberia. It's Iberia. They started work on that. And has, hasn't been released yet. It probably will release. I think they should do a Russian DLC. Personally, one of the one of the biggest countries, if not the biggest European country, yet they haven't done a DLC of it. Modders have done like Rus map, for instance. They've done parts of Russia. Keep right and then exit right. Makes sense to do it, although it'll take quite a while to do. It's Russia, isn't it? It's quite big. Exit right. So. That might be the next step for them, actually. It's uh, still I'm still surprised doing DLC for it. Well, anyway, to get off the topic of games, because that's pretty much what I've been talking about this entire video. Um, obviously, the uh, the situation in the world is kind of bleak, but it instead of spreading that negativity I suppose like I've been doing quite a bit of different things with with my time um, obviously because I've got loads of it now uh, well everyone's got loads of it so oh god I don't know where to go here everyone's got loads of time So it's a question of like, what are people going to do, like, 
people who have like a lot of different hobbies I suppose it's not going to really be, be that bad for them like like for instance I like play guitar, I play guitar and all that so that's kind of like not a problem I could do more of that which is really really good uh, but you know you get bored eventually so like I've been doing like a lot of different things I've been like going out for a lot of exercise going out for like uh, like even just going like for a walk like is, is beneficial it's really really be oh god I don't need to turn um, it's beneficial to go out for walks and stuff and just do different things like I've been playing a lot online with friends uh, which is really really helpful like I've been playing games like Minecraft and Battlefield and yeah yeah it's been really really fun like it's not it's not bad um, in that respect it's just a bit annoying that you, well you can't go anywhere you can't, you can't go to like a gig or whatever like a music gig because they're cancelled or spawn, sorry. And you're in the process of getting rescheduled, but like it's totally different take on like life now. So it's kind of like alright, you've been told not to do this and you've been told not to do that. Alright, so people's now at home. The streets are pretty much empty. Like, it's insane, like, what it does to, like, an economy of, like, well, I'm not going to go into detail about that, like, economies and, like, life, like, the way of life and standard life for most people. Like, I suppose it's good because it removes all of the nuances, like, a really busy life would have. You've been told not to go out. If people like to go out all the time, all right, and they're very busy. Well, oh, they can't do that anymore. They can't go out anymore. They have to kind of like stay in a little bit. So it kind of forces you to like slow down and you feel like the day drags because, especially when you're doing nothing, it drags. I suppose that's what like we kind of need is to like slow down because you've got social media, which is a pain most times because of like online trolls and stuff it's ridiculous uh, to, to be honest but positive po like positivity of not having social media all right you can do what you want you can disconnect a little bit all good just disconnect from social media refresh stuff uh, do stuff you want to do you don't have to like post bloody statuses all the time like that's that's good and I found myself using social media less and less and less and it's really really beneficial you spend less time checking a computer or your phone and more time doing stuff you want to do makes sense really good in that respect anyways uh, <laughs> I had a few music gigs booked or in line I had one booked and a couple of others in line um, obviously that's not going to happen um, I don't think this year if I'm honest I'll be surprised if any do come out with this year like at the end of this year it's, it's I'm really I, I really will be surprised But at the end of um, the end of this month, I was about going to see Evanescence in Leeds. That's only like two hours from. Well, I say it's about an hour on the train from where from like where I live. Not that long at all. Um, 
I was really looking forward to it, and then this happened, and I was just like, okay, I am right. Even if the po if it were to the, be the point, I would choose to, if we, if we were still allowed to like go places, I still wouldn't go. Uh, it's been rescheduled that one. I was going to see Guns N' Roses as well. They haven't actually cancelled that gig, I don't think. That's up in Glasgow, but even if it was this year, I still wouldn't go. Oh, despite Guns N' Roses being like cool though. Guns N' Roses has has Slash and he's awesome like a really good guitarist they're not really like do, they haven't done an album since like 2009 and that's like 11 years ago so yeah, I don't think they'll be doing another album I, yeah because there's like Slash does his own stuff I think so, I mean Slash has always done his own stuff he's done like Velvet Revolver and uh, he had like a solo album and then he did one with Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. I think that's who he ma mainly hangs around with. Does his does his own stuff, which is pretty cool because it's it's still pretty amazing what he does. Yeah, so I was gonna see Guns N' Roses, obviously yeah, it's not gonna happen. Uh I want I want to see Metallica again. Definitely. Cause that was pretty. That was a pretty good gig. Cause I, I just love. I just love Metallica. But they're probably not going to come to the UK for quite a while. The um, it was twenty nineteen in June. Uh, June twenty nineteen when I saw them. So effectively, that's not going to happen for about another two years I'd say next year it'll have to be next year it'll have to be maybe even 2022 if they don't get around to like doing it yeah I would love to see Metallica because I was too far back the first gig I went to at the Etihad Stadium I didn't realise the Etihad was so big to be honest it's my first ever gig like first ever gig Like, I didn't really expect much. I only paid, like, five... Ah, just being fine for speeding, nice one. Um, I basically didn't have any experience of gigs. And I thought, okay, I'll just... I'll go to this gig, I'll pay some money, and I'll see the band, but not spend too much in case I don't like it. So... I ended up seat like sitting near the top of the stadium. I didn't. I didn't even realize it was so big. I sat down. And I was like, "Oh my god, this is massive!" And I was afraid of heights. I am still afraid of heights to a degree. When I sat down, I thought, "Oh my god, this is so high up!" Like, obviously, I now know what the stadium's like. So if they do play there again, I know what to do. <laughs> so, but if they do another stadium, like I might, I might even go somewhere else if they if they do it. I don't, I don't know. Because sometimes they, they don't do like the littler cities. They don't do Leeds, obviously, unless they do. I don't know. Like, they don't do Leeds. They do like the big cities, like Manchester. I mean, they've been there before, like many times. So, makes sense. But, oh boy, if they did some of the smaller cities, that'd be great. It'd benefit me a lot, actually. <laughs> train, train, like, fares and, and hotels and stuff, that would be great. I suppose, like, earlier in March, as well, I kind of... I went to Leeds for the first time, and quite frankly, uh, <laughs> this this is uh, this was quite a strange one. Um, I went to the Anime Gaming Con, right? So I I chose that because I thought 
you know what, instead of doing everything like going out to the pub, having a drink, getting like really drunk and coming home in a taxi, like you've done that enough. Oh. Um, I've done that enough. Let's do something different. So, me and my mate got on the train to Leeds. And, <laughs> I mean, it only took an hour. I was quite under... I wasn't, I wasn't overwhelmed by the city. Because uh, I've been to Manchester, which is bigger. It, well, I, yeah, I believe it's bigger. So it wasn't really a shock to me. But I didn't know my way around. And I ended up getting lost. And then in any way, like, we eventually found the place. We went in. Get ready to turn left. We got our um, ticket. Well, we had a ticket. Uh, and then I was like, right, okay. Um, we get wristbands. Turn left. And this was, like, early March. So this was still when the um, that virus outbreak. It was still, like, in its inception, I suppose, of this in, in the UK. It was, it was a lot... It was a lot worse in Leeds than what it was in my area so we went there they had wipes and stuff to clean the controllers etc and it was terrible we both went there and we just wanted to go on the games because that was pretty much the only appealing thing there and then we were just like do you want to do you want to go somewhere else so then we ended up going someplace i was like right there's an art gallery somewhere why don't we go there my mate was like, all right, I like art. Yeah, we can go there. Get ready to turn right. Obviously got lost. Stumbled across Forbidden Planet in Leeds. Turn right. And, oh my god, what, the city where I'm from, uh, well, the town I'm from, um, that I visit, more so. I don't live... Right, so it was like the Middlesbrough store, but I don't live there. I live in a town, like, away from, like, only about 15 minutes away on the train. And that store was small. The Leeds one, it was like, oh my god, it was amazing. It was really big. Really, really, really big. So we ended up looking in there. I ended up finding a Pickle Rick bottle opener. Which was like the highlight of the trip. But we spent quite a while in there and then we went home. Uh, actually, no, we went back, played a few more games. It was like Rocket League and Street Fighter and... Uh, Dragon Ball Z and that was about it <laughs> not a lot to be honest and yeah got home on the train got back for about five o'clock set off at a, we, we, we arrived there about one-ish so we didn't spend a, a long time there but it was a good day out it was pretty fun um, I'm gonna have to do a u-turn here I think because that's meant to be that way. Yeah, I'll just drive around the place a little bit. Explore the dock. It's all got a bit of a story. So we ended up getting back. Oh my god, I didn't even tell you about the train guy. The train... Right, there was a guy on the train. From... Middlesbrough. As he was... You know, and he, he, he was talking to this guy. This old... Man. On the train. <laughs> and he, he, oh my god, he, he was drunk. He was drunk, so obviously you can imagine with what is going to be preceding what I'm about, like, that about that situation. So effectively, cut a long story short, um, I'm lost. What he, what he did, he started banging on about his family and whatnot. Alright, fine, he probably has, like, family, like, issues like everyone, but... You know, whatever. And then, oh my god, he he made friends with the conductor. Made friends with the conductor, and then um, she was listening to all of his weird problems and stuff, and about his family and that. He was quite concerned about his his mum, I suppose. Um, but some of the stuff he was coming out with was actually. You know, it, it kind of turned into the best train journey in my life because trains are normally very quiet, especially with that guy. Not not with that guy, anyway. 
pretty funny. It, it was funny, but it kind of wasn't because it was, he was, it was drunk. But nonetheless, best train journey ever. And we still laugh at it to this day, me and my mate who were on the train. <laughs> drunk people, everyone. Are kind of funny when they get to the level of sensible, intoxicated behaviour, not when they're really drunk and start lashing out because they're idiots. Like, that, that's not funny. But just making a fool of yourself, I suppose, and just trying to make friends with people on the train. That's like a memorable experience, but that's going to be it for this episode of your Truck Simulator 2. I could have gone on for a lot longer. But yeah, wow. A lot of stuff's going to uh, change, I think, over the past, over the next month. Um, so look out for that. Um, but for now, everyone, this is this is the end of Euro Truck Simulator 2. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more indie and simulation game content. And I shall see you all next time.